By the mid-1950s the Soviet Union had a rather difficult situation with tanks. The models already in use by the Red Army were either obsolete, IS-2, or very expensive, IS-3. Before I get to the topic of the video, I want to thank everyone who subscribed to my new Visioner History channel. There I post very interesting and shocking videos on interesting topics. The link to the channel is in the description and in the upper right corner. Well, we continue. As for the IS-3 model, it could not boast of good performance properties. Each tank had a 122mm rifled cannon on board, which was relevant during World War II, but was considered obsolete in the 1950s. There was a situation where all the tanks used at the time by the Soviet Army had their own shortcomings, so the main armored department of the USSR Ministry of Defense developed several parameters, which should distinguish the new tank, and it was to be developed by 1960. According to the design, the new armored vehicles had to weigh not more than 60 tons, but be equipped with a 130mm gun. The technical specifications were received by two plants at once, and the selection of a permanent contractor was planned to be carried out on a competitive basis. Several years later three varieties of heavy armored vehicles were prepared. The Chelyabinsk plant presented the Obiek 770, and the Leningrad company showed the Obiek 277 and the Obiek 279. The first version of the Leningrad tank was based on the T-10, whereas the Obiek 279 was an entirely new tank and to this day is one of the most unusual types of armored vehicles. The design team for this tank was headed by L.S. Troyanov, who had earlier distinguished himself in creating the IS-4. Every detail of the new fighting vehicle was unique, but most of all the undercarriage, which included two pairs of caterpillars, was a delight. A distinctive feature of the Object 279 was its impressive cross-country capability and high protection. The tank's armor and its coating made it possible to use the armored vehicle even under conditions of radiation contamination. The first tests were conducted in 1959 and the model was noted as raw and requiring serious modifications. Problems noted by the designers included poor flexibility and the cost of producing a single vehicle was too high. Despite the problems the tank was not rejected and the project became one of the most promising in the Soviet Union. Engineers and designers planned to improve it and make it the most protected tank in the Soviet Army. But Nikita Khrushchev interfered with the plans, who in 1960 forbade the development of tanks that weighed more than 37 tons. The history of the Object 279 ended there, and all work on its creation was stopped. To date, only one specimen has survived, which can be seen in the Museum of Armored Vehicles in Kubinka. It should be noted that until the T-80U Object 279 was the most protected type of such armored vehicles not only in the Soviet Union, but also in the whole world. Of particular note is the design of this tank, which featured a fairly standard layout. The hull of the vehicle was made of four large elements welded together. On the side of the hull were shields of steel for anti-shock protection. In addition, it was thanks to this part that the Object 279 got its famous streamlined shape. One of the advantages of the model was a powerful armor of 192 mm, which provided reliable protection in all conditions. In some sources you can find information that the thickness of the armor was 269 mm, but such figures are clearly overstated. The armor had a large angle of inclination, due to which it was possible to provide the equivalent of 550 mm of protection. Given the weapons available in the armament of other countries at the time, the Obiek 279 would have been impenetrable due to its armor. This model of armored vehicle was equipped with a hemispherical turret, which was slightly flattened. With a turret armor thickness of 305 mm, a slope of 30 degrees created the equivalent of 352 mm of armor. All of this allowed the Object 279 to gain incredible toughness, which was achieved without the use of the combined armor system. However, this affected the mass of the tank, it weighed over 60 tons. Four people could fit inside the heavy tank at a time. Three crew members could be in the turret and the driver mechanic sat in the front of the hull. In addition, there was a hatch in the central park to enter and exit the armored vehicle. The main armament of this model was a 130mm M65 gun and a 14.5mm KPVT machine gun. 
This allowed the muzzle energy to reach 16 mJ, which is almost 1.5 times higher than that of the advanced 120mm guns and comparable to the best modern models. The weapon was loaded semi-automatically, and the rate of fire was 7 rounds per minute. With a weight of 4,060 kilograms, the weapon was almost 60 caliber long. Among the distinctive advantages of the gun were the presence of a slot break, as well as a barrel blowing system using compressed air and an ejector. The combat power of the Object 279 was half automated. The combination of semi automatic loading devices made it possible to obtain a rate of fire of up to 7 rounds per minute. Future plans were to produce a more sophisticated system capable of firing up to 10 rounds per minute. Close attention was paid to power units of the vehicle. It was supposed to use two diesel units, 1,950 horsepower. Both engines have horizontal cylinder arrangement. This arrangement was intended to make the most efficient use of the free space already so small in the tank hull. Depending on the conditions of use the tank had a cruising range of about 300 kilometers. For better maneuverability the engineers decided to eliminate the manual transmission and fitted the tank with a three-stage mechanical hydromechanical transmission. The standard arsenal of the Obiect 279 consisted of the following elements, an innovative Groza stabilizer on electrohydraulics, the TPD-2C reticle sight, which boasted an automatic stabilization function, night sight, working in tandem with the L2 infrared illumination device, an advanced fire control system, which was charged in semi-automatic mode at the time. It should be noted that all the developments intended for the Obiect 279 were used in the design of serial armored vehicles in the 1960s. The undercarriage of the tank looked impressive and seemed very massive, but the uniqueness of the design made it possible to reduce the weight of this element by almost 500 kilograms compared with the T-10. The undercarriage was completely unique and consisted of four caterpillar chains and 24 caterpillar track rollers with internal cushioning. Thanks to the internal cushioning and hydropneumatic suspension, engineers managed to achieve no ground clearance, which made landing in the ground impossible. During testing in 1959, many disadvantages of the running gear were discovered. For example, when driving on viscous ground the efficiency of the tank decreased significantly. In addition, the production of elements for the undercarriage took a lot of time and money, which made it impossible to produce it in series. Among the additional arsenal of the tank was AR-113 radio, as well as advanced equipment for radiation and chemical protection. The model could also boast an effective fire extinguishing system, which operated in automatic mode. Thus, despite the fact that the Obiect 279 was never put into serial production due to its heavy weight, complicated running gear and high price, the tank is now considered to be one of the most innovative developments of the Soviet designers and engineers. I thank you for watching. Your support is very important to me. Your comments and thumbs up motivate me to release new videos on interesting topics. Subscribe and turn on notifications. See you in the new videos.